you have the strong feelings what we're going to have it here. Thank you very much. Thank you. because I like archaeology. Obviously, I didn't have time to get in or get out from the office, you know? But that was part of my life, and that's what I love to do. We're yeah. almost all? You're very blessed to be able to do this. Okay, thank you. Your attention, please. Well, the UNESCO from the United uh, Nations are working since three or four years ago in Tiwanaku and Pumapunku. They are using drones with uh, infrared lenses to make the steadiness. I bring some information about what they find with those drones in the infrared. They got five meters below the surface, you know. For example, here's Pumapunku. We are in this corner right now. In this corner, we're going to walk a little bit. And in the other side, Poznansky, one of the oldest archaeologists who comes from Europe, talk about the sea, the big lake used to be around here. And he talks about the pier, or, or, uh, where the ships arrive. How do you say in English? The wharf dock. The, the docks. docks. So, with these instruments, they found the docks where the ships used to be. Right now, we're not going to be able to see it, but with this technology, they find out that the docks are over there. So, we have so much information now, that later I'm going to tell you in Tiawanaku part of it. I am going to repeat it again. These uh, drones, they are eight. They found uh, uh, 411 acres almost in the surface, but deeper, Tiwanaku has 750 acres. So it's like a big city with the streets and everything. To get in that part, it will take 50 years to find out whatever. So, what we saw in right now is just a little scratch. For example, in this part, we got two platforms. They detect two more platforms inside. Inside, two more platforms. According to it was detecting that Puma Punko two, has two more platforms that are buried, which surrounded the entire py pyramid. So, they we start to find it in this age, what we living in that time, things better than before with our technology. <coughs> so let's keep uh, going, but this was very important because this is a very new information. Thank you very Thank much you. for your attention. Till now in Kyoanaku, it has a hundred and uh, 90 meters long and 184 wide. Uh, got seven levels. It measures 18 uh, meters high. And uh, it's nice like the different uh, um, pyramids we find around the world. This is a different, like Puma Punku, what you see before is different, it's flat, and this kind is flat. So we're going to be walking to the top 
and I go use, uh, I go, I'm going to show you something real good about um, a tunnel, which one is in the tip. So follow us and have that your, uh, like Einstein said, we got 30% of scientific things, but we have 70% of intuition. Have your intuition, believe in what you look in when we are in these places or wherever you go. Please don't forget what something is telling you, maybe it's the truth. Please follow me now. Kind of sensors in 180 meters. And you know, after be, to be working, the computer give us this. From this point to this point are the 180 meters. From the surface to the end is 42 meters. The good thing about this is the orange part, which one we detect a big chamber, almost 10 meters by five in another chamber and seven 84 by 5. The only thing I could do is dig one meter and a half and be here. Nobody yet since the destruction of Tiawanaku did get in those chambers. It was funny because after we showed this, they kicked us out from the Institutes of Archaeology. Yeah. Hmm. Some powerful thing because I was ready to get inside. But at the same time, when I show this, a lot of people say, well, Antonio, you're going to become to be a, a millionaire because in those chambers must be gold, silver, and all that. And I say, yeah, maybe. I'm not looking for gold or silver. I'm looking for the knowledge. And the knowledge, like this thing, are all around the Tiwanaku. Let me tell you the last study notes from the UNESCO, uh, United States uh, part of it, they put a lot of drones with infrared lenses and this pyramid is lower. I'm gonna show you a li little bit uh, uh, later when we walk around that is, is deeper and this side got two more platforms and they found out that Tiwanaku already got uh, 411 acres, not city yet. And deeper, we got 700 acres. It will take 50 years to find out the big city, which one is under the ground. Yeah. So th what we're gonna see here is just little scratch what we got, but you're gonna really enjoy it now. That's what I was trying to tell you in the beginning. Please go ahead with Brian, and and I'm going to be uh, uh, guiding you. You have to get in the inspiration. This one, that one. Where's my step? There. Yes. See that rock with the gold It's because you can breathe. There is a tunnel. Right now, this part is the topper of the where we are right now. So we find, uh, they find this tunnel, which one it has 55 meters, 75 uh, centimeters high for 45 uh, wide. A uh, skinny guy can get it in this tunnel. Which one we believe that goes to the, where the Grand Master are buried, you know? And also to that chamber. But the main thing about, see how Perfect, it's the tunnel, yeah, and there's this stalactite. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. It takes a long time. Near, wow. Yeah, we can determine mm -hmm. how old is this part. Mm -hmm. The longest one has 55 centimeters. Which one, it could be depending of the stalactites, that every two and a half centimeters got 150 years, sometimes to 500 years, and that could measure Tiwanaku for a lot of, time, lot of uh, years, thousands of years in this site. 
Well, Tiwanaku was built little by little, also. like in the big cities, they make uh, new buildings and all that. They did it also here in Tiwanaku. So this is very important. I'm very glad they didn't destroy the stalactites. They destroyed part of it. But the main thing I want to get in that, when I get there, is to get in the bodies of the Grand Masters. That's the main thing I want to do in the future. They, haven't, them. they haven't sent a skinny guy in yet? Yes, yes. Oh, but not yeah. to the end, no? No, it got the stirs also. Oh, they have robots part. that can do that. Yeah, yeah. we put a, a underground temple there. Excuse me. Right there. Lately, the UNESCO with the drones and the, and the special lanes, uh, infrared lanes, find another temple like that, but there. See the, the road? And it's bigger than this one. It's detected already. <coughs> so in about five years from now, they're going to uh, take everything so we can, we're going to be able to see it, that temple also. I hope you're going to get back by that time also. Yes, huh? right. mm -hmm. Well, okay. they don't have to deal with immigration again. <laughs> <laughs> also, That's right, notice the size of the church. Compared, mm -hmm. to, compared to the size of the town or village. There's a lot of people who say that that actually is the, is the secret structure, that there are underground chambers underneath the church. And of course, what always happens in many parts of the world is an invading people, like in this case, the Spanish, they would ask, where is the holy site? Like, where's your holy of holies? And they go, well, it's over here. It's like, okay, that's where the church is. So they build the church. That, well, that's what, that's what the case is of the, the Coricancha. They said, where's the Holy of Holies? Oh, this, come, we'll show it to you. Oh, what's this? Oh, this is the Sun, the sun Temple. All, uh, you know, plated in gold on the inside. Okay, we'll take that, you know. And so they ripped the Sun Temple down to the foundation. And psych psychologically, what they were doing is saying, we're destroying your belief system physically. So they ripped all the gold off. And the reason why the Inca, had, you know, and it was only in that room, you'll hear stories about, oh, the gold was there, you know, it's not that much gold. But it was inside that structure without a roof, because on the winter solstice, the sun was perfectly aligned to come up and then shine inside the room. And that made the whole thing like light up like that. So they, yeah, they, they tore down the sun temple and, and put, the, put their church on top of it. That was the first construction. And then in 1950, when the big earthquake happened, then parts of the church fell down, of course, because the masons, Spanish masons, were, were using way too much concrete. You know, it's like, let's make it fast. And so then uh, the church went to uh, the city council to say, well, we want to do reconstruction work and rebuild the, the temple. But what happened was, is that the megalithic stuff inside had been coated with about a quarter inch of plaster. So nobody knew that it was megalithic, but when the earthquake happened, parts of it peeled off. And when the city council went inside and looked at it, and they went, whoa, you know, that's the finest. It's the finest, when, when you go to the Cory Country, it's the finest stonework in the Americas. Nothing can touch it. They said, this is Inca. If you want to rebuild your church, you take all that plaster off. Which they did. 